Bill Carroll, Zinni 6 u Media, and of course it's close to, to my Christmas, and Christmas for everyone who truly invests a lot of time and energy in the NFL draft. The draft is just a few short days away, um, less than, well, just a little over two weeks. And I want to talk about some of the things that people are either uh, discussing, analyzing, or over-discussing and over-analyzing. And I'll start with the player that went into this process as almost everyone's universally top-rated overall prospect. Of course, that's Jalen Carter, defensive tackle from Georgia. And Jalen Carter has had a bit of a roller coaster ride, uh, beginning obviously with the very tragic and uh, very sad death of both Chandler LaCroix and Devin Willock in the car crash, in which, once again, uh, he was charged with reckless driving and racing, but He's pleaded uh, not guilty and, or no contest, sorry, to misdemeanor charges of reckless driving and racing. I don't believe that's going to be a thing that truly tanks his stock. What the most impact upon his draft stock, frankly, is going to be the fact that quarterbacks are being pushed up the board via trade, and now the Bears, who still have an eye on him at nine, might get a chance to get him, you know, even despite trading down. I think there'll be several teams between five and nine, maybe even really it's four and nine, but I think probably the market starts around five and nine, looking at Jalen Carter. The other thing that people are, are expressing concern about is he showed up nine pounds heavier than he played during the season, 323 pounds at his pro day, and was put through a very rigorous workout. The uh, coach that ran, the defensive line coach that ran his workout, is known for trying to see if he can gas guys out. Guess what? He succeeded. He managed to cut, kill, uh, cause Jalen Carter to gas out, he also didn't run a 40. While that's not a make-or-break thing for a defensive tackle, when someone shows up nine pounds heavier, doesn't do all the drills, and gasses out, it doesn't help, right? I understand. I don't think it's anything to be too much to be concerned about, but it does not help. It doesn't fill someone with confidence when those kinds of things take place. So the teams, other than the aforementioned Bears, that I truly could see taking a long, hard look at Jalen Carter. I mean, frankly, every team should. But uh, the teams that I think will at least kick the tires, as they say. Uh, once we get past the teams that we are almost certain are taking quarterbacks, right? And we know that the Panthers traded up to take a quarterback, most likely call Rich Bernard, a.k.a. C.J. Stroud. Then we have the Houston Texas, who will take whichever quarterback is not taken by the Panthers. The Cardinals could certainly consider Jalen Carter. I believe they're going to go pass rusher. I think that that's probably either Will Anderson or possibly even in Tyree Wilson. Then we come to the Colts. We're going to take another quarterback. The Seahawks could do virtually anything. They could take Jalen Carter. They could take Wilson. If Wilson's still there, they could take uh, one of the top corners. But once again, Carter could land there. I think the market really heats up for Carter right around these next two picks. The Detroit Lions are a team that, now they're going to really look deeply because they care about character, especially football character, but I think this football character is close to exemplary, so I think they'll be satisfied with what they find. The next team, in fact, the next few teams are teams I could really see really taking him. Uh, so the Lions certainly could, unless they go corner. I could see them possibly even going wide receiver. I don't think that's very likely, but I think they're going to go probably defense, and my guess is... If one of the top pass rushers is still there, that's what they'll do. If not, one of the top corners. And then we go to, as Chris Burm used to say, the Raiders. Now, they could use everything. Uh, they're a team that is in transition in a lot of positions. Uh, I think they would look long at hire Jalen Carter. If he's not gone in one of these picks ahead of theirs, very easily could go there. And then the next few places that I think he could land would either be the Falcons. Falcons, another team that could use literally everything. And if he's, once again, he's a, a, a player that everyone already has rallied upon his time at Georgia as a two-time national champion. He'll help sell tickets, though I think that's not their main concern. And then the next two teams, I think the Bears would be thrilled if somehow he fell to them at nine. Last but not least, if somehow he makes it past all those teams, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and I would I think he's a good chance he will go before this, but if somehow he makes it past all those teams, the Eagles are sitting there, to quote the late, great Red Barber, sitting in the catbird seat, 
right, at number 10 would snap him up. The best way to use him. I don't think he's going to end up being, I know people love him, I don't think he's being not quite as good as a pass rusher as, say, Fletcher Cox, or even as good as a pass rusher as Chris Jones. I think he's just a notch below those guys. That still means he's going to be a terrific football player. I'm not down on him. I just think he's going to end up being slightly less than some people might think. I know we're hearing terms like generational, which has been sort of a devalued term nowadays. I think he's going to be very good. I think he's going to have a solid 12-year career. I think he's going to make four or five Pro Bowls and be two, maybe three times all pro. I just think he's going to be a little less, like I said, than Fletcher Cox or Chris Jones, but right there maybe behind them, which is still a very good football player. So those are the things I think are in the near future for young Mr. Jalen Carter.